Hi everyone, my name is Braylon and I wanted to sit down with you today to talk to you a bit about Jupiter retrograde. So I have my little planet here, Jupiter. This is going to be helping us really tap into these energies and the different meanings to what this may be having an effect on our lives like. What is this going to do? What is a Jupiter retrograde? What can we, you know, look forward to? What will be some of the challenges? All of that kind of stuff, okay? So I have Jupiter here with us. I love holding this little planet. Jupiter is our largest planet. So this is the, I have all the little planets minus Pluto, of course. And Jupiter is a really, really decent size. Like these planets do a really good job at showing the different sizes. You know, I have little itty bitty Mercury and little medium Venus and Jupiter is definitely um, a holdable planet. He is large and in charge. So I just wanted to sit down today, guys, and kind of give my interpretation of, you know, what I, what I think this transit is going to bring to our lives. I thought it was very interesting that Jupiter is going retrograde. Um, he went retrograde on March 8th, but it was pretty late March 8th. I believe it was like around 8 p.m. Um, California time. And um, I live in Michigan, so for Michigan, I believe it was around 11 or so. I'm not sure, but I know that Jupiter went retrograde yesterday, and he is retrograde right now. So, you know, I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys. I have a few notes here just, you know, to keep myself guided. And I also have a few things that I just like to channel and things that I would just like to incorporate in my reading. So Jupiter retrograde. Jupiter is our largest planet, you guys, in our solar system. And Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius and the co-ruler of Pisces. Let's see here. Jupiter is known as the king of the gods and Jupiter rules our higher mind, you guys. So when I think of Jupiter, I definitely think more Sagittarius. Um, you know, I think most Pisces are very Neptunian. You know, Neptune is the ruler of Pisces and very anciently. They call Jupiter the ancient ruler of Pisces. So long ago, long ago, Jupiter was considered the ruler of Pisces as well, the coal ruler. So what do Pisces and Sagittarius have in common? Well, they square each other on the zodiac wheel back here. Pisces and Sagittarius make this kind of... 90 degree angle I believe but they square each other so that's an interesting aspect there and the one thing that Jupiter and, and that, that Pisces and Sagittarius have in common is our belief in things right the only difference really is that you know of course Sagittarius is a fire sign Pisces is a water sign but Sagittarius you know they're all about the expansion of sight that's why I, I, I think more Sagittarius when I think Jupiter because Jupiter is the planet of expansion Sagittarius is the ninth house of philosophy you know, so it's all about taking this kind of philosophical pr approach to life, towards our beliefs, towards what we can gain higher knowledge towards, right? And then, of course, a lot of astrologers mention how Jupiter is the planet of luck and Jupiter is the planet of good fortune. And, you know, just personally, I believe that Jupiter is associated with luck and good fortune because this is an optimistic planet. This is a planet that has a relatively good energy, just like Sagittarius. You know, Sagittarius is always energetic. They're always kind of this energetically hopeful kind of individuals, right? So Jupiter kind of takes on that same energy. It has a very positive vibe to it. So it's all about, you know, our faiths and our beliefs, now, this planet has gone retrograde, so some of you may not know what retrograde means. Now, when I first started studying astrology, one of the first planets that I realized went retrograde was, of course, Mercury, which we have going retrograde in a couple weeks on the 22nd. Um, so Mercury is one of those planets that go retrograde most. You know, it goes retrograde at four times a year or something like that. And then we have Jupiter, and I just read this last night while I was studying about this. Jupiter goes retrograde every three years, I want to say, or, uh, no, not three years, it was like 13 months or 19 months, something like that. So I'm like, wow, Jupiter goes retrograde, like, not too often, but the whole, the whole act, guys, of this retrograde, the very word retro means to move backwards, right? Have you ever heard someone say, we have to look at this in retrospection or look at this in retrospect? Well, what that means is that you want to look at this a series of past events. So when a planet moves retrograde, what it essentially is doing is it's, it's you know, planets have their own natural orbits and they orbit and they orbit and they orbit. But sometimes a planet begins to slow down until it's actually at a halt. 
And when this planet halts, well, to the human eye, it, it seems as if this planet is moving backwards, right? And astrologers have that debatable, you know, they say that Mercury doesn't really move backwards. It just appears to be moving backwards. But the energy that, that the planet is, is giving off is a very retro, past, word, past movement, slowing down, you know, let's take a minute here. So Jupiter is essentially slowing down in the sky and it is coming to a halt instead of it moving forward and going on its natural course of action it's slowing down now and i'm looking at this as an in, a, in an energetic way like wow i feel like it's so interesting that these planets kind of slow down you know and and, and kind of stop moving and you got to think why that is and when when this happens in astrology at least for me I like to think about what that planet means and what that planet is doing in the sky, where that planet is in our chart, right? Where that planet is doing this certain thing at in our life, because then we could have a better understanding as of how this is going to affect us. So just in general here in the intro video, I wanted to talk a little bit about Jupiter and what I think Jupiter means and what I think it means for Jupiter to be going retrograde. And then I wanted to talk to you guys individually, each of the 12 signs real quickly, just, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that it can be about 10 minutes of conversation so that all together these can be about 30 minutes or so. Yeah, I just wanted to take a look at collectively where this energy is going to be happening. Now, Jupiter is going retrograde in the sign of Scorpio. So, of course, all the Scorpios watching, that means that Jupiter is going retrograde in your first house of self. So Scorpios are kind of experiencing this firsthand. And then we have Sagittarius that's experiencing this in their 12th house, you know, and then we have Pisces who's experiencing this in their ninth house. So all these different energies are going to play out in different unique ways for all of us. But this is significant, guys. Very, very significant for this to be happening. It's interesting to me that the planets have all been direct for about three months. Um, a lot of the astrologers that I watch have been talking about that, how, you know, they really don't have any knowledge of, in, or memory of the planets being direct for this long of a time. So we had a good chunk of time for all these energies to be forward moving. And I do hope that all of us took advantage of that. I hope that we, you know, took those energies and used those influences to, to really drive us and to move us forward. Because now we have some planets kind of moving backwards. And this does affect our lives, guys. So Jupiter is the first retrograde of 2018, making it very interesting. You know, it's like all, all this light is being shed on Jupiter until Mercury joins the retrograde uh energy on the 22nd now jupiter is more of the of a higher octave you know it's interesting that gemini is opposite of sagittarius right gemini is ruled by mercury so gemini and sagittarius are opposites because we have this whole th third house and this ninth house energy now the third house is the lower mind, right? We think of communication. So Mercury rules the lower mind kind of. Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo. So I just thought it was interesting that no matter what way you look at it, Mercury is opposite this very, you know, this belief energy, right? Virgo is opposite Pisces, which is the co-ruler of, Jup of Sagittarius, uh, of Jupiter. So Gemini is opposite of Jupiter, Virgo is opposite of Jupiter. So whatever way you look at it, Mercury is kind of the opposite shadow energy of Jupiter. And I think that's because Mercury controls more of the thoughts and communication, kind of the lower mind, you know, the, the mind we're, that we, we're used to operating at. But then the, there's an ascension that happens, right? That's a very Jupiter word, ascension. Because to ascend is to essentially expand, right? And Jupiter is all about that. So when you gain higher knowledge, when you're when Mercury kind of takes steroids, it becomes this Jupiterian figure. And Jupiter is all about, you know, philosophy. It's all about getting to the, the deeper meaning of things. It's all about our beliefs. Now, our beliefs, that's a different area of our chart, right? It's the, the ninth house. Jupiter rules the ninth house of our beliefs of edu a higher education, wisdom, all of these all of these words that mean to simply expand your knowledge, right? Jupiter is all about the higher mind. Mercury is the lower mind. Jupiter is the higher mind. So at the end of this month, you guys, we're going to have our higher mind and our lower mind together, not in the same house or anything, but they're going to be retrograding back into the past. Now, one of the things that I was led to write down when I was kind of taking notes and getting into this kind of Jupiter feel is back to the future. 
Now, I have not watched Back to the Future as thoroughly as I could, as I should, but I'm actually planning on doing so. I think all of us should kind of, even those of you who are kind of from the older generation who really know Back to the Future, and if I did, I would probably incorporate that a lot here in this, in this kind of video, but... You know, I know enough about Back to the Future, and just saying that kind of is interesting, like Back to the Future, you know, like that's kind of moving forward and backwards at the same time, going back to the future. So I don't know why I was led to say that or led to write that down here, but I think this this Jupiter retrograde is going to have a lot to do with going back to the future. So very, very oxymoron there, guys, you know, and it just shows you how expansive Jupiter really is. Jupiter is this planet. Anything that Jupiter touches, it expands, right? It expands it. So Jupiter going retrograde is kind of, I feel that it is expanding our past in different areas of our life. It's, this is Jupiter's way of kind of saying, okay, guys, so Saturn and, Saturn and Sagittarius, since 2000, it was in, Saturn was in Sagittarius, I do believe, from 2014 to 2018, I believe. But for the, na the last three years or so, guys, we had Saturn in Sagittarius. And this energy is kind of being brought back up because Saturn left Scorpio in 2000, well, it was in Scorpio 2012, and then it entered Sagittarius. So that energy, I believe, is being brought back up here. Because I believe during those, the last three years of our life, we had a lot of karmic beliefs form. We had a lot of karmic knowledge. We gained a lot of karmic wisdom. And what I mean by that is that it was just simply on our karmic path to learn these things. I believe that Saturn and Sagittarius um, definitely, definitely aligned us with some of these, some of the beliefs that we were actually karmically meant to align with, right? So here comes Jupiter, the ruling planet of all this energy. And... I believe that when Jupiter slows down like this, that it's really a test on our faith, okay? We didn't realize that, right? You know, we just, as humans, we just so effortlessly, well, it's not always effortlessly, but if you think about what it is that you believe, right? What it is that you really believe. Now, what does it even mean to believe in something? Well, to me, when I was kind of reflecting on this energy, it means to have faith in something. It means to, you know, and Jupiter is the planet of sight. Sagittarius is the house of sight. You know, seeing seeing is believing, right? But then Pisces is ruled by Jupiter because that's the energy. When you get to the 12th house, it's not about seeing. It's not about seeing, it's feeling. So I think beliefs kind of mix those two energies together. Sag and Pisces, science and, and spirituality. All of these things are kind of being touched on here with this Jupiter retrograde because Jupiter wants to know why we believe in the things that we believe in and if these are authentic beliefs. And it's good. It's good for our belief systems to be checked like this because like I said, for some of us, it's so effortless. Some of our beliefs have been taught to us. Some of our beliefs have been forced on us. Some of our beliefs, some, some, and a good example of this, guys, is that some of us are actually walking around with the belief that we are less than what we are with the belief sometimes there's false beliefs right so a false belief is another thing that comes up here it's time for us to look at these energies in retrospection why do i believe what i believe what has caused me to believe these things so our foundation that our the, the foundation of our beliefs are being refined they're being looked at in a greater way Jupiter is kind of disappearing a little bit, guys. I kind of felt the need to say when I woke up today, where is Jupiter, you know? And what I was going to say to you guys is that we, we so effortlessly, we go through lives and we're like these human sponges. We learn, you know, just like, the, just like a philosopher, just like Jupiter, you know, where, where life is an adventure that we're studying. It's a science project. This is kind of an experiment, you know what I mean? And so during those experiments, when you're writing these notes and you, you mix this with this and, oh, you had an explosion, let me write that down. Well, your beliefs are kind of shaped and formed around these ideas, around these, you know, the evidence that you have, right? And so it's, it's, it really brings the question to me. Should evidence and beliefs go in the same department? Now, when you're thinking, when you're talking about the ninth house, yes, sure, sure. When you're when you're speaking in a scientific term, you know, scientists are all about proving things. But here's the thing: when you really, truly believe in something, do you need proof? 
So I have a post that I, you know, all every time the planets do something major like Mercury retrogrades, new moons, full moons, and of course Jupiter retrograde, I had to post, you know, a little, a little bit. I like to keep my friends and and peers, like uh, online peers, updated. My my social media is used for mainly astrology and enlightenment and positive reinforcement, things like that. I like to use that as a platform, you know, to kind of spread positive energy and stuff like that. So in, on my post on Instagram and on my post on Facebook, I was talking about Jupiter and, and it, you know, I, I usually just channel these things. I usually just pick up my phone and I'm typing out whatever messages come to me. I kind of channel it. I do a little bit of studying here and there. And it's interesting that I say that because Jupiter involves both of those things. Beliefs of, in, involve both of those things. A little bit of studying, a little bit of experimenting, but then sometimes it's just a feeling that you have. Hello, Pisces. Hello, Sag. Pisces and Sagittarius together, man, is there magic that happens when they come together because you have literally Jupiter together. You have Pisces, you have the ninth house and the twelfth house. Between when you travel around the zodiac wheel from Sagittarius season to Pisces season, you are little do you know, you are developing a strong belief in something in yourself, in your foundation, in your emotion, in your lifestyle, wherever this energy is hidden for you. I believe what takes place between the ninth house and the 12th house is a very obscene amount of faith and belief. You move from seeing and sight to feeling and emotion. So it's just really, really interesting to talk about all this. And another thing is that, back to what I was saying about the poster, whatever, a lot of questions came up. Like one of the questions I put was, why is it that we need to see where we're going before leaving? You ever think about that? Why is it that we need to see? And it, it reminds me of that Martin Luther King quote. Belief, well, I think he said, having faith is, is taking that first step without seeing the rest of the staircase. So if you really want to just use that as a metaphor, like think of yourself, and, and this is another thing. I've always used that analogy myself too. Uh, he was a Capricorn, uh, Martin Luther King. So, which means Sagittarius, it was his 12th house. Interesting. Um, but I, when I think about beliefs, when I think about having faith in something, I always picture this ladder in my head. I picture this old wooden ladder that's been out in somebody's shed for a long time. And, you know, one day they just, you know, they need a ladder for something. So they're like, I got it. I got a ladder out back, you know. And they, they see this, they come face to face with this ladder. And, you know, their belief in it, their trust in it is a little bit shaky you know so what do you do you it's kind of like jumping into water right you don't trust that it. it's it's you're afraid right so essentially belief is the opposite of fear belief is having hope and trust and faith in something right so when you break these energies down it's like i believe in you well what does that mean well it's like i have faith in you that's what it means when you when you hear that or when someone says i believe in you or when they say i don't believe that I don't believe that to be true. Well, it means that you don't you don't think it's true. You know, you don't you don't have faith that that's true. So I think beliefs and faith go hand in hand, and I think the opposite of belief is doubt. I think the opposite of belief is fear. Fears and doubts, they go right together. What we fear is what we doubt. Sometimes we doubt that we fear things. Sometimes we we doubt we, we're fearing things because we have doubts in them, okay? So this is what's coming up, guys. This is what this Jupiter retrograde is all about, I think. I believe you know, when when the planet is moving forward, what they what they symbolize is what they symbolize: expansion, higher knowledge, philosophy. You know, the higher mind, wisdom, um, education, educating yourself, luck, good fortune, whatever. So when we take that meaning and move it backwards, I don't want to say that it means the opposite because I kind of I kind of think about tarot when when and I don't do reversal cards often, but. You know, let's use the hanged man, right? And that's an awful one to use because he's already upside down. But the hanged man, up right side up, means enlightenment. It means looking at something from a different point of view, all right? I should have used like a, a more extreme card, right? But that one just came to mind for some reason. And I think that's a Neptune card. But if you turn that meaning around, it means maybe not looking at something from a different way. Maybe the extreme need to look at something from a different way. Maybe it means that you're no longer suspended on an idea. So anyway, my point is, is that when I when I sit and think about these energies, just as my own kind of, I'm kind of a novice astrologer, right? And not really, like I love astrology, I've been studying it for a year now, 
but there's more to learn and you know I just I go off of what I feel I like to channel things you know that's where I get all my information of course I study a little bit but sometimes I just have this higher knowledge I have Jupiter and Sagittarius so you know that's just that's in, and that's in my 12th house so I'm all about belief I'm all about learning more and you know Jupiter I did read that Jupiter is how we're going to be of service how we want to help other people because it's the expansion planet so wherever Jupiter is in your chart it's essentially expanding you know so for me no wonder I'm doing this channel and you know doing tarot cards because my 12th house and my 11th house are expanded right so spiritual friends are especially good for me and I hope that that's what expands in my life but you know, go backing up a little bit. Speaking of backing up, thank you, universe. It, I kind of forgot my thought there, but we were literally talking about backing up. So, and we we're talking about the reverse tarot cards and stuff like that. So, to me, I, I think of what Jupiter means moving forward. Jupiter is a very expansive, you know, higher knowledge type of thing. So, when we say Jupiter is slowing down in the sky and Jupiter is moving backwards, well, I don't think it means the opposite of what Jupiter traditionally means. So it doesn't mean bad luck. A lot of people think, oh, well, Jupiter means good luck and good fortune. So, oh no, Jupiter's going retrograde. We're going to have bad luck. We're not going to have any, any good fortune. I don't believe that. I believe that that could be true for those who manifest that for themselves. But, you know, I'm really feeling strange. I don't think Jupiter is that simple. Sure, it may mean that we have to try harder. It may mean that you won't find 20 bucks on the ground tomorrow it may mean that you have to do something to align yourself so I think luck is gonna be you know it's almost like Jupiter I don't mean to Jupiter I hope you're okay with this but I kind of just seen a fairy in my head a little fairy godmother that's all and it's so interesting I have a little crown right here that I'm looking at as I say that so Jupiter is like this fairy godmother of luck right it's magic Jupiter is magic Jupiter is the like the like the sight it's all like this it just it's very wise planet okay very very wise planet and for Jupiter to be moving retrograde it means that his influence is not as strong and it's not because Jupiter is weaker or anything it means that the influence needs to be it needs to be taken back a few steps I think that Jupiter has been straightforward and online for so long and we had that long period of um, Sagittarius having Saturn in their sign so everything was karmic and our luck and all of that our good fortune was very karmically bound so I don't think that Saturn was too comfortable in, within a Jupiter ruled house because Saturn and Jupiter are kind of opposite energy Saturn restricts Jupiter expands so there was that harsh energy but I think that those were essential years of learning you know what we believe in I think our beliefs were kind of tried and restricted but expanded at the same time so what I'm trying to say, guys, is that this, as far as the challenges of this, this transit, I believe that this is an important time, very, very important that we keep the faith. If you all of a sudden start doubting something during the next, this is the next four months. Another thing I meant to mention is that this planet is retrograde until July 10th. So that's four long, long, long months of the planet of expansion, the planet of luck, the planet of higher knowledge, the planet of philosophy and our beliefs definitely slowing down a bit a little bit harder to access right but that's why you go within because we all have our own natal jupiters right some of you may be born when jupiter was in retrograde and you know i read that when jupiter is in retrograde in a person's chart they may have a difficult time expanding so guys it's just time that we put in our own work jupiter is always here to expand and i think we take jupiter for granted you know like we, our beliefs are something that's so personal to us, right? That's why it's in the ninth house of, of so we're passionate about our beliefs. You know, we're, we're emotional about our beliefs. Gosh, have you ever tried to bring up some kind of religious conversation with somebody? And if you don't agree, it gets crazy, right? Some of our, some of our main wars have been fought over religion. And that is so weird to say that because Mars is currently hanging out in Sagittarius with the moon right now. And golly, like religion is just, you know, I know that it serves a good purpose or whatever, but you want to evolve into this kind of spirituality, like get on board because religion is, is kind of man-made, you know, it's, it's, it's just so interesting that the house, the ninth house is both the house of science and beliefs because, you know, those two, th th those two things didn't really agree back in the day, you know, when it, when people used to, it was either the big bang theory or God, or is, is it evolution or, or Christianity? And it's like, guys, it's both like, it's everything. 
you're supposed to expand on everything. Why do you think Sagittarius and Pisces are ruled by the same planet? Because we are equally, we are supposed to expand equally. Science and spirituality go hand in hand. The astrology tells it all. Pisces and Sagittarius are ruled by the same planet because we are supposed to expand equally when it comes to science and spirituality. They go hand in hand. Science, that's why I love astrology. Astrology is spiritual. Astrology is scientific. Astrology is factual. I mean, go outside and look at the stars. Like, they're there. The moon is here. The moon is full on the 31st. If you go outside on the 31st, guarantee the moon's going to be full in Libra. Like, science I love mixing science and beliefs. Astrology is my calling, you know, and it, I just appreciate it so much. And for this planet to be going retrograde, guys, I feel that we're going to have to put in a little bit more work. We're going to have to work a little bit harder. Things aren't just going to appear for us. We're not just going to, you know, it's it's kind of necessary. It's, it's a necessary slowing down because Jupiter wants to know who's going to stay optimistic for the next four months. In the next four months, are you going to be, do you, do you really need help? Because listen, guys, when you truly believe in something, when you truly have faith in something, you don't need to see the end result, you know, and that's the whole Jupiter scientific Jupiter belief. It's, it's, are you a scientist or do you believe in this? Do you need to mix these two beakers to know that they don't go well together? Are you just going to, it's kind of the, a, a, it's a chance. Like that's why Jupiter is the planet of good luck and fortune because I just picture a scientist that literally didn't blow up in his lab because, you know, because he was lucky and because he just has a lot of good fortune, you know. So it's important for this planet of good fortune and luck to kind of slow down sometimes. The universe thought it was necessary for between March 8th and for July 10th, for this planet to move retrograde our beliefs are slowing down our our faith in things are going to be challenged we are going to experience certain doubts okay but jupiter wants to know who's going to expand these doubts are you going to expand beyond the doubts because doubts come up to show you hey what if it doesn't work out you don't know what if there's not, what if this step isn't real? Well, oh well, I have faith. And you know what, guys? I'm going to tell you as a Pisces, my faith gets me places all the time. Like, it doesn't matter if I go against the physical, like, listen, Virgo and Pisces, Gemini, Sagittarius, the reason why we're opposites is because, well, there has to be balance, first of all. But what I was going to say is that by nature, I go against reality. Because I am the opposite of Virgo. I'm the opposite of the sixth house. So as a Pisces, being co-ruled by Jupiter, being ruled by Neptune and Jupiter, it makes me a really, really weird person of belief. You ever see a Pisces believe in something? If a Pisces, you got to be careful because if you're a Pisces and you believe in something, it is going to happen. It, this is all about manifestation, you guys. How do you manifest something? Well, you believe in it. You see it happening before it happens. You know, that's what a, a, that's what a spiritual person will tell you. You want you want to align yourself with abundance? Well, then you need to behave like a person who already has abundance. You you know, it's like it's like aligning yourself with something before it's there. That's the trick. That's the trick to the universe. How do you think we all came here? It's because something believed in it enough. Something saw it happening before it happened. And that gets me talking about visions, right? Jupiter can be the planet of vision. It's the planet of sight. It's the planet of foresight. When you talk about Pisces and, and Sagittarius together, it's the planet of seeing before. So you talk about deja vu, you know, if you ever experienced deja vu, Jupiter is all that. It's about having the higher knowledge. Like, I feel that this is extremely strange territory to be talking about, but it makes sense to me. Do not doubt yourself. Do not doubt yourself. If, you know, Jupiter will show you what it is that you shouldn't believe in any longer. So some of us, okay, Taurus, I'm going to use you as an example. Taurus is going through a Jupiter retrograde in their seventh house of relationships. Some of you Tauruses out there, you could have been keeping the belief in this relationship, you could have been keeping it. Oh, it's okay. I just believe we'll fix this. I just believe it. I just believe, I believe, I believe. But Jupiter goes retrograde and some of you, not all of you, so don't freak out, Taurus. Okay, I know you guys are really loyal lovers. I have a Taurus moon, okay? But for some of you Tauruses out there, if, it, if you have had a false belief in a relationship, because sometimes we can create false beliefs. We are our own gods, right? We are made in the image of the creator. We are in a unit. We are in a, a universe, 
So universes create things all the time. Supernovas, dark matter. Universes are infinite, right? So sometimes we expand beyond infinite, infinity. And when you expand beyond it, it like I asked it on my Facebook post, I said, what happens when you expand beyond the expandable? Well, you are very wise and you come back knowing the unknowable. You come back, and that's exactly what it feels like talking to you guys, is that I'm explaining things that only make sense if you're able to expand. You know, so... If you guys are Mercury ruled, and I'm not saying that Mercury is closed minded, but Mercury is more about facts. Facts and beliefs, they're different. You know, they're kind of cousins. They kind of get along sometimes. But when a person truly believes in something, they don't need to know for sure, right? I heard that on a movie before. I heard that on some kind of movie quote or something. But that's also something that just came from me, is that when you believe in something, you don't need to read it, you don't need to see it or feel it, you just know. So as a Pisces, sometimes I literally can feel an energy around me. I'm like, mm, I know there's an energy around me, or I know that person is going through this. And then you have people that gaslight you. So I want to mention there, be careful of gaslighting around this time. And if, for those of you who don't know what gaslighting means, it's someone who's essentially manipulating you. They know they know what they're doing they know that you're true they know that you're telling the truth and that they know they believe you but they want to make you feel crazy just for the 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 sheer fact of of manipulation like this is when you know someone knows that you're like you guys literally know it together it happens in relationships a lot like just like it's like if i was talking about astrology to, to a person who literally believes in astrology too but they just want to gaslight me it's like they take your energy no, astrology ain't real, man. Even though they read their horoscope every night, they're like, man, whatever, that shit ain't real. Yeah, okay, you're gaslighting me. Like, gaslighting is something that happens to our beliefs. And I feel that this is, it's interesting that this is coming up because I believe that we should be very careful of gaslighting over this time because our planet that symbolizes our higher knowledge, well, it's kind of, it's going to be harder to reach, you guys. That's what Jupiter retrograde means. It's going to be a little bit harder to reach. And, you know, that brings up the ultimate test of who is really going to be about it, about it. Who's going to still be doing this, you know. So I'm going to talk to you guys all about the different areas. I'm going to go through all the 12 signs in, in the videos and talk about the areas that this is happening individually for you. For Aries, for Taurus, for Gemini, for Cancer, and you know. So this is happening in opposites for all of us. And I'm going to just talk a little bit about the houses that this is happening in. Right? For Aries, this is happening in their 8th house. For Taurus, this is happening in their 7th house. Gemini, their 6th house. So those energies mean different things. And we can kind of hone in and talk about this a little bit more. So that'll be a little bit more clear to you guys. Because this is a time where our sight can be a bit blurred. Now, it's so interesting that this happened in Pisces season. Where, you know, our emotional beliefs are coming up. Where completions are happening. I'm telling you, this happened for a reason for Jupiter to go retrograde in Pisces season. Our faith is going to be tested and tried, okay? Jupiter is moving backwards and, and slowing down so that we have to put in more work when it comes to what we believe, okay? And it's important that we stay optimistic and energetically hopeful about this because our this is like a dissipating faith. Our faith is going to be a little bit... It's, it's to test people. Do you, do you believe in this because you have proof? Or then there's the real ones that believe because they feel it. They believe because, see, there's two different kinds of belief. Some of us believe things because it's what we've been shown and taught our whole life. Some of us believe things because it's what we've saw. It's because it's what we, you know, but I'm saying there's other things that you believe in your heart and soul that you really have no knowledge. And that's interesting that Jupiter is the planet of beliefs and higher knowledge. Those two things are very, that's a dangerous, dangerous combination because unless you look at it in a way like your knowledge comes from a higher source. Because see, people don't understand that knowledge isn't factual. Knowledge is just what a person knows. You know, we can we can bring knowledge with us from from seven lifetimes ago. And maybe in this lifetime, that knowledge isn't here. Maybe some of us are from different planets and what we know is not factual here. But how does the, does that mean that it's not factual in another area? Does it mean that it's not factual in another realm? Because in the dream realm, I can be at seven places at once. But here, you know, matter and gravity and, and shit doesn't work like that. So you want to be careful of what what you think are is facts. Because facts and facts leave no room for possibilities. 
So, you know, when we when we step into this place of doubt, which I believe some of us are going to be challenged with, you know, this place of doubt, this place of fear, now that Jupiter is a little bit invisible, now that Jupiter is harder to reach, farther away from us, moving backwards, you know, you want to be careful when you're dealing with these doubts. You want to ask yourself why? Because doubts are what we believe easiest in. Isn't that crazy? Our fears are what we believe the most. The negativity, you ever realize that? That we believe the negative things that people say about us. It's easier to believe the negative things that people say than it is to believe the positive things. And, and that's coming up now, guys, in this video because Jupiter is, is literally bringing this all to the forefront. What, what are our doubts? What are our beliefs? What is the relationship between those two things and why? Is, it, is there any kind of higher knowledge that we can gain from it? Is there any, is there a wiser approach that we can take or something more that we can learn? Now, something I haven't mentioned yet, guys, well, I've mentioned it a little bit with the whole back to the future thing. It's going to be trippy. It's going to be trippy because this isn't like Mercury. Mercury goes backwards and it's literally a blast from the past. But since this is such an expansive planet, Jupiter is moving back into our past, not only to, you know, go over, I mean, and this is, Jupiter is going to cover areas over the last four or five years. Anything that you've, you know, developed a belief in or developed faith in over the past four or five years, Jupiter is going to go back in time and, and show you it from a different angle. It's going to expand it for you. So that's why it's, Jupiter is such a badass planet that even when it travels retrograde, it's expansive still. It's even more expansive, honestly. Its influence is even more expansive because it's almost like a parent that chills out, you know, and lets this kid, I picture a baby walking and kind of falling down and that parent's right there to catch him, right? Oh, it's okay. How is that kid ever going to believe in itself? When So Jupiter is kind of like our crutches, you know, but you should never have a crutch when it comes to your belief. You should just be able to walk, you know, you should just have faith. You should just try and keep faith because faith will get you a long way, guys. And it's all about these doubts that we have, you know, and these doubts are going to come up in different areas. We're going to cover that in the personal videos. So Jupiter's traveling back into the past, you guys, and that when our parent, you know, we're walking on our own now, we're these three-year-olds or however old we are when we start walking and, you know, we want to do it ourselves. And it's it's time to prove ourselves to the universe that we do believe in what we believe in and that our beliefs are an expansion of us. They are an ascension of us. We are evolving and it's ascending, you know, we are ascending. And the, our beliefs either help us grow or they diminish us. You know, I know, and it's none of my business, but some people believe in certain things that, you know, our beliefs are powerful over us. What we believe shapes us. What we believe is what we base our entire life off of. Why do you think this is the biggest planet of the solar system? It has a lot of influence over our lives. So you want to ask yourself, most importantly, if this confused you, ask yourself what it is you believe in and what got you there? Do you believe in it because it was taught to you? Do you believe in it because you, you want to pay attention to the answer? Why do I believe in this? Why do I have faith in this person, place, or thing? And the answer to that is going to be essentially what ascends you. You're going to be a lot wiser when you ask yourself these questions. Why is it that I need to see where I'm going? Does that, doesn't that kind of, it makes the journey pointless? right? Sometimes you can't see what's up ahead and you just have to carry on and walk on your own and have faith in the journey, have faith in the universe, have faith in yourself, have faith in your own strength. These things are coming up, you guys, because Jupiter is slowing down. And, you know, like I said, our faiths and beliefs will be challenged by doubt and by fear. And you want to look out for gaslighting too. I believe that we are going backwards in time. Our higher minds are pausing and going backwards to expand on on what we may have missed you know we're going backwards to gain wisdom and jupiter is going in these certain areas because we need to grow some of these areas that we need growth in need more time it's very important these things are very important that we could have missed jupiter can be so expansive sometimes that we could expand beyond things that we could have learned a little bit more about that's the only thing about you know, science and beliefs is that we, we expand and we learn more and we learn more and we learn more and more of the puzzle comes together. And there may have been something that we missed. So I love retrogrades and I embrace retrogrades because there's obviously something that the universe is trying to show us. 
from the past or you know it's and it's not necessarily the past it's just something that's not in front of us on the journey there is Jupiter says that there is something behind us that we overlooked there's something that we can learn from our past there's something we can learn from what has already occurred and it's time to look at that in a different way it's time to look at that we've grown a lot you know over the past years so it's time to take who we are now and who we are because of these beliefs and because of our faith and look at this in a different way because we're not the same people so we're not going to be looking at it in the same perspective our perspective has been expanded our knowledge we know more we see more we believe in different things i bet our beliefs have changed if you think about what you believed as a child santa do you guys still believe in Santa Claus? <laughs> because, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, Santa, but I have not gotten any presents. And, I, you know, I don't, you know, holidays or whatever they are. But, you know, that's just an example. Do you believe in the tooth fairy still? So it's so interesting that our belief is ruled by a, a mutable fire sign and our, an immutable water sign. Because we have a, our feelings change a lot. The fact that Jupiter is ruled by mutable planets, it just goes to show you that our beliefs change out throughout life. Our philosophy, our our higher knowledge, it has to be something that can change because think about it. Think of Mercury, I mean think of Jupiter rules ruled and that's interesting. Mercury is also ruled by my by mutable signs, Gemini and Virgo because what we think often changes. And it's interesting to think about Mercury and Jupiter together because our lower mind and our higher mind, our thoughts and our beliefs kind of mix together. They're friends a little bit. So our beliefs are essentially shaped by what, around what we think, what we think and what we believe, what we think and what we believe, what we believe we think, what we think we believe, okay? Astrology, man, it's wild. And it makes sense if you just take a minute and just kind of look at these things, take some time to discuss these things, these different energies. It's, it's interesting that Jupiter is ruled by a mutable, mutable energy. And that just goes to show you that what we believe changes and it mutates over time and you want to be careful because sometimes that's a negative thing sometimes others can impose our beliefs we sometimes others impose their beliefs on us right you have those people that and i don't disrespect any of these religions but i don't feel a positive energy from anybody who that who tries to force a belief on you jupiter is not about forcing anything it's about the natural expansion of things you ever have a, a really deep, expansive conversation with somebody, and even if you believe in different things, you still learn? That's that's what Jupiter is about. Jupiter is so expansive that you can disagree. You can move backwards. You can go back to the past and look at something differently without the harsh feelings, without a war. You know, we do have Mars and Sagittarius and stuff like that. But what we believe in, it should not be, it shouldn't add aggressive aggression. It should happen naturally. Our beliefs, guys... If you're wondering, you know, well, what do I believe? What is my faith? Some people find themselves troubled when they don't have a religion, when they don't believe in something. It's like, you believe in something. Some of you are agnostic. Some, of, some people believe in many different things. I believe in everything. I believe that if there's a human somewhere thinking it, that somewhere it, believe, it, it, it exists. So I wouldn't worry too much about your beliefs changing, but more so them just evolving into something that is a is a more accurate depiction of your life now it's important that what we believe in over time you know there's there's one year old us and two year old us and 21 year old us and 67 year old us and and you know if we take those different points of our lives what we believe in is different you know it might stay the same but it might change you know a lot of us feel like what we believe in should stay the same forever but no what we believe in, you know, human the human experience is all about expansion. It's all about growing and expanding and ascending. We came here to ascend. We came here to experience growth in lessons and karma and energy. And guys, I just feel like this is a time for us to look at all that in just a little bit different of a way. And I promise you, come July, you know, over the next few months, we're really going to be expanding in different areas of our lives, you know, and it's, it's for the better. It's because we needed a little bit more time. There's something in the past, something behind us that Jupiter is going to expand. Okay, 
And, you know, this is happening all in our eighth house. So it may happen beneath the surface. It may happen a little bit secretive like. It may happen intimately, you know, because Jupiter's in Scorpio. Jupiter's going to be in Scorpio until next year. So when Jupiter is in the eighth house, it expands in an intimate way. It expands at an emotional level. It expands at an intensity. It's, you know, this is really, really rocking awesome, you guys. It's, it's pretty awesome. So this is what I think about Jupiter retrograde. Um, I do hope that this information was kind of cool. And this is just what I think. This is just what my mind came up with today. There's always more to say. And I'm going to save that for your individual videos. Those are going to be those are going to be like 10 minutes or so, guys, or maybe 15, 20 minutes long so that these videos can be about an hour long altogether. So that's what I have for you. And this is Jupiter, you guys. Jupiter's retrograde. And this is what I think it's going to, you know, these are the energies that I believe it. This is what I think, I guess. And um, we can ex expand a little bit further on that in your individual videos where I can talk to the individual sign, you know, a little bit more about the actual house that it's expanding. Now, as far as your natal charts, hit me up. We can talk about what Jupiter means in certain houses, but this is general, in general for Gemini, in general for Pisces, in general for Aries, all these different signs, okay? So... Hey, Jupiter. Thanks for going retrograde, bud. Let's see what you got. Expand us. All right, guys. I will talk to you in the videos for your individual sign. See ya. Hello, Aquarius. Me and Jupiter are here to talk to you about Jupiter retrograde. So I'm not sure if you watched my intro video, but I talked a lot in that video. Well, in the intro about Jupiter and about what Jupiter means and a few channeled things about that. And I will briefly mention some of those things in this video, but since these videos are so short, um, I really just wanted to talk to you in general about what Aquarius can be experiencing with this transit. This is happening in your 10th house, Aquarius, and this is the house of career and legacy. So Jupiter has everything to do with expansion, right? It has everything to do with kind of the higher knowledge that can be gained and Jupiter, you know, it's such a large, it's the largest planet in our, our zodiac or in our, our solar system. So wherever Jupiter is in someone's chart or wherever Jupiter is in the, in the universe, it's in Scorpio. So Scorpio is your 10th house of career. And Jupiter has been here for a few months. And on the 8th of March, a few days ago, it went retrograde. So when a planet goes retrograde, you know, yes, it slows down in the sky and it begins to move backwards to the human perception. And, you know, a lot of people take the meaning of that planet and they kind of reverse it. But for me, you know, I am a Pisces and Jupiter is my co-ruler. So, and I have Jupiter as Sagittarius, so I kind of understand the, the expansive knowledge that comes with Jupiter. And for you, it is happening in the house of your career legacy. So this has everything to do, you want to think of the, the Capricorn energy when, it's, when you're talking about the 10th house. Which is all about, you know, and even you too, you know, you and Capricorn are right next to each other on the wheel. And you guys share this, this common interest of, well, Saturn, first and foremost, and then of your long-term thinking. You guys think very futuristically about certain things. And I believe career and legacy are two very prime examples of what we should be thinking forwardly about, you know. So Jupiter has been in your 10th house kind of expanding career related things which money is related to career right legacy is related to your career there's a lot that can be kind of missed in there career covers a lot it's it's the thing you want to do in life right and your legacy is kind of related to a career because it's the thing you want to do in life but what you want to also leave behind right once you're no longer here so it's almost like you need to figure out that that really thin line between your career and your legacy like I've actually heard those words said together, like, what is your career legacy, you know? But it's, like, kind of interesting to think about that. So Jupiter has been in your 10th house expanding your long-term goals, right? Expanding your career, and for, for some of you, it could even be the expansion of a job. So kind of it's kind of interesting here when you expand a job while it's moving up, right? It's getting a promotion or moving from this placement to someone who has a little bit more responsibility. And it's interesting, when I was talking to Scorpio... I, I was honest about expansion and how, yes, getting bigger is mostly, most of the time, a, a good and positive thing, but Jupiter has this overwhelming energy where it's like, you don't get to pick and choose 
what expands when Jupiter is in a certain area of your chart, right? So to expand on the career level, well, heck yeah, it would be really nice for things to expand in your career as far as money, right? But, you know, it's what comes along with that expansion, you know, and I'm talking to you like, like no other sign, because I've done these videos and it's, it, I'm in the Aquarius video and you're the only sign going through a 10th house expansion. So this could be kind of stressful for Aquarius because Aquarius is, are they're already so focused on, you know, you guys can be typically the warriors, you know, like you guys worry about a lot of things and it's just because you, you think about the future, you think about the stability and the, the, the surety of your future, right? Essentially your foundation, you're an air sign, you know, so the intellect has to be balanced there, the thought process that takes place and let's face it, you know, a lot of our thoughts are consumed with money and with our job and bills and it's because we live in a very physical realm. So Aquarius can sometimes, you know, you're the water bearer, you know, you, you come as a helping source, you're always of service to other people and you're the humanitarian, you know, you're the collective, you're the collective kindness, things like that. So this higher knowledge of something like career, which Aquarius, every Aquarius I know is always worried about, you know, Aqu Aquarius, when they're, when they're doing well in the career sector, they're doing well as a whole. And I'm not extremely sure about why that is Aquarius, but it's something I embrace about Aquarius and you guys are very, very um, admirable because of that. I look up to you guys a lot because of that. And so you're gaining this kind of higher knowledge about your, your career and you're expanding your, your long-term goals. You can even be learning over the next four months because Jupiter is, is retrograde in your 10th house for the next four months. That's a long period of time for you to kind of, I don't know, do some expanded thinking on on where it is that you want to work and what it is that you want to do. You know, I know that there's a difference between job and career and that could be what is brought up to you guys in the next four months, you know, like some of you may find yourself in a place that you just, you know, it's okay for the time being, but you're like, how long am I going to be an accountant? You know, like, do I really want to be an accountant for the rest of my life? Is this going to ensure my family? Is this going to ensure my legacy? Is this good for me in the long term, in the long run? That's so Aquarius, you know, and that's so 10th house, like the 10th house wants you to be okay now and forever. So I think Jupiter retrograde here, ex expanding your, your 10th house, um, it can be a good and bad thing. I think some of you are just going to be really thinking on a higher level about your career, which is good and bad. For some of you, it's going to add to the stress a little bit because you're going to be all of a sudden, because of this Jupiter influence, you're going to be thinking, hey, you know, is this something I, you know, it's easy when you're not thinking about it, right? When you're just paying the bills, but Aquarius is, is, is really intellectual. So sometimes you guys think about the future in a very intellectual way. So you're like, mm, this couldn't only possibly be about money. And, you know, I, I get where that serves a purpose, but I also want to travel the world. I also have these goals and these dreams and what I want. I have these fulfillments that I'm after. And is this job taking away from me? Is, is this, ex is this expansion, you know, what is Jupiter going to show you, Aquarius, about this? I think it's going to be different for all of you. So what is it that you believe about your legacy? What is it that you believe about your career? Because that is what Jupiter is in your 11th house kind of finagling. Jupiter has gone back in time. It's moving backwards to slow down the career pattern for Aquarius. That's exactly what's happening is that Jupiter is a very fast, like it's not a fast moving planet, but it just kind of feels that way because of the impact it has over our astrology system. Jupiter is so large that any movement is big and, and quick and it seems expansive and large and, and like it has a huge impact. So with that being said, you know, even Jupiter has to go retrograde sometimes because if it didn't, we could overexpand things, you know? Life is not meant to happen all at once. It's, you know, it's meant to happen in sections and in, in different chapters and different portions, you know? You're not supposed to not everything in life is meant to happen immediately, you know, why, why would we want to fast forward such a profound experience? So the Jupiter energy, it's slowing down to kind of shift our belief in things. Now, it seems like a cruel thing to do, right? It seems like a very cruel thing to do, especially to shift someone's belief when it comes to their career foundation and like, especially to an Aquarius, just don't do that to Aquarius. But guys, I think this is going to be beneficial. Everything happens for a reason and there's something 
behind you on the journey, something that you've overcame, that Jupiter is going to be kind of bringing back around, you know, and for you, this could very much be an old job that comes up, you know, it could be, um, you could be thinking about how happier you used to be when you did this kind of job instead of the job you're doing now. Um, it doesn't even have to be a job or a career. It has anything to do with your legacy. So anything that you've done to build up who you are and to build up your essence and, and what it is that you bring to the table, Aquarius. Um, since this is a retrograde, it kind of brings up the past a little bit. So this is like considering past careers, you know, what you what you do in your career. Like, is your value being appreciated in this career? Is there... You know, some of you could feel a little bit like you've overexpanded this career. Like, you know, I've been doing this for so long and you know you're a smart Aquarius, so you kind of learn very quickly. And you could have, you know, that's the thing is you could have outgrown your environment. Jupiter is known for that, outgrowing your environment. So that's kind of interesting to be going through in a career because you kind of get stuck in these, excuse me, we get stuck in these jobs and we get stuck in these careers to pay the bills. And it's just, it's kind of unfortunate because it takes away from the human experience. So Jupiter wants to know why you believe what you believe. Because this is the planet that rules our beliefs, right? This is the planet that literally brings with it higher expansion. So I think you're going to be learning a lot more about your career. And if, for those of you who don't know what you want to do for a career, I think the next four months is going to be solid material that's going to kind of lead you down the path and lead you towards the energy of what it is that you're meant to do for a lifetime. Now that is beautiful because we're all in search of a purpose. And I'm going to write purpose down here because I don't know, I just feel like it's a very strong word for this transit for you. And I feel like it's a strong word for the 10th house and for, you know, your legacy is essentially your purpose, right? It's it's the whole purpose of life, you know, to leave behind something that you no longer have to be a part of, but it's still carried on in your name, right? Very intense stuff. And Jupiter just wants to, to kind of challenge that and for you to gain a higher knowledge about that, about your purpose. So what do you believe your purpose is, Aquarius? What do you believe your, your legacy is? What is it that you believe? This is also career beliefs too. And so, you know, just like everyone else, I want to talk to you a little bit about the opposite of belief, which is fear and doubt. So since this is a retrograde, guys, this is going to be a little bit different of an energy. All of a sudden, over the next, throughout the next four months, Aquarius everywhere could be feeling a little bit of doubt within their career. They could be feeling like, you know, there's going to be certain career challenges that come up that challenge your belief, you know, that challenge your, you know, your, your faith, you know, that it challenges your faith in this career. So some of you may feel an insecurity over the next four months in your job. This can manifest in a lot of different ways. You know, this, this has everything to do with this expansion, this, this, this expansion of your legacy. So Jupiter may expand you guys right out of a job. Like, no, Aquarius, you are meant to do this. And this job is keeping you from this expansive, expansive legacy. So Jupiter comes in as the biggest planet and expands you beyond, you know, the opposite of Jupiter is Saturn, which is all about boundaries, right? So this is kind of an opposite energy for you when you think about being ruled by Saturn, but you're also ruled by Uranus. So at a heart level, even though you're a fixed sign, Aquarius is all about radical change. You know, as long as it's sensible, as long as it's kind of intellectually balanced, as long as you understand it in a mentally stable way. You know, you're, you're not a mutable sign, so it's not all about, you know, changing on an emotional level so much or changing your mind a lot. It's just change on a collective level. Like, Jupiter is kind of like that, so I think you guys are going to have, you're going to understand this change because, you know, with with expansion often comes change, you know. So that's another thing to talk to everyone about this month is that how Jupiter is expanding in a different area of our life now. It's kind of going retrograde, so... You have to kind of assume that changes are going to happen because of that. Changes are going to happen because of what we know now and because of this higher knowledge. So it's interesting that this is happening in such a solid area for you, Aquarius, because this is a grounded area. You know, our legacies, our purpose, our career, they're all things that we think should be grounded, right, and that we, we should reach in a specific way. But you're actually really blessed and you're really, really lucky. This is the planet of luck as well. And that's another thing. There could be certain you know, luck and things like that in your career, but Jup you're lucky because Jupiter, the planet of expansion, is in your 10th house, where I don't think the career is often expanded, you know, in a sense that I'm talking about. Of course, there's always moving up the ladder in a business or a corporation, right? But I'm not really talking about that kind of expansion. I'm talking about 
expansion that grows you, you know, on a spiritual level, on a, on a knowledgeable le level. And it's this kind of expansion that you don't really have to work towards. It's something that happens naturally along your path. So I think it's pretty interesting that you have this expansion going on in this 10th house of career, something that's long term. So this is, you could be getting ready for expansion in your future, right? That might be why Jupiter is kind of slowing this expansion down for Aquarius so that you guys don't expand beyond something that you could have learned more from. So I think the important thing to keep in mind here is, you know, keeping the faith when it comes to your legacy and knowing that everything happens for a reason and that you're at certain, you know, you may be stuck in a shit job right now or you know, I don't know if some of you love your jobs or if you just really, I think there's a, I feel for most of you that you just really want to expand. Aquarius doesn't like, I know you're a fixed sign, but there's this energy about Aquarius that likes to grow because you guys are collective. You guys are the 11th house of groups, you know, it's like expanding a group. You know, is there six people? Is there 16 people? Is there a thousand people? It's like an audience. So Aquarius is all about the collective. And when you consider the collective, I mean, it doesn't really get much bigger than that. That considers everything. So when you think about this on a universal level of change, you know, you want to keep faith in that. And you have to understand that certain things happen when they're meant to. Certain things happen in divine timing. So that's coming up a lot for you, too. Um, you know, going back to the job thing, if you're in a certain job and you're really looking to expand, you know, and that's what I mean is that Aquarius is, is all about that. It's all about serving the best good, serving the best in humanity, Ser serving humanity in the best way that you can is what I meant to say. You know, you guys are really, really helpful people. And sometimes Aquarius feels that the best way they can help is to be expansive, to, to bring this, exp you guys are a sign of knowledge too. Aquarius, you guys are the aliens. So there's a lot futuristically that you know and that you bring to the table that you don't feel like you're being of service if you're not bringing, if you're not talking about this expansive knowledge. So you want to take that part of you, Aquarius, that is very similar to Jupiter, very similar to Sagittarius, because you are expansive in your own way as well. You're used to seeing things at a collective level. Aliens, you know, they're not from here. So when you think of yourself as an alien like that, you know, you have a higher knowledge towards things. So you may even, you may even find it beneficial to tap into that higher knowledge when it comes to this career expansion, when it comes to these career challenges that may come up. Pay attention to any doubts that come up for your over your career throughout the next four months, okay? And in July, you're going to be back rocking and rolling, and Jupiter's going to be online. It's going to be uh, straightforward again. And you're going to, so I think for the next four months, it's important that Aquarius, you know, whatever's going on with your career right now is what's supposed to be going on because there's certain knowledge that you can learn from it, even the people you work with, even the way, the way you work, the hours you work, how much you're working, how, how not much you're working. Career is a very broad topic, but whatever's going on in a career sense for you is important right now, and it's important that you kind of, you know, if Jupiter's slowing down, I think it's a good idea that we slow down too, because this is the largest planet, so what is Jupiter trying to show you? Jupiter wants to know why you believe what you believe about your own legacy, and why you believe what you believe about your own career, and about your own knowledge. You know, it's all about your beliefs, and, and those may be challenged here, so pay attention to any fears ask yourself is this a real fear or is this jupiter in my 10th house making me think i should quit my job you know so just try to keep, keep a clear head about it you know you're very mental aquarius you have a very strong mind so you know embrace those challenges right now because hidden within those challenges is supreme knowledge that will come in handy come july when you guys are just going to be on a different path when it comes to your career i think a lot of aquariuses are going to be really you know, jump starting a certain, the career that's meant for you, something that's tied into your legacy. So you also want to ask yourself what it is that you bring to the table and what your unique gifts, talents, and abilities are. Because our talents and our gifts and our abilities are kind of clues to what we should do as a service for this planet. Some of us are good at speaking. Some of us are good at with our hands. Some of us are good mentally. And there's jobs that fit those categories. So it's about figuring out what it is that that you believe about what you bring to the table so that you can incorporate that and feel happy in your career and feel of service to the to the humanity and to the collective so i think that's all i have for you aquarius just i want you to keep the faith when it comes to your purpose all of you have a divine purpose and all of us are on that path we're just in we're just on the path in a different way we, some of us may be here on the path others of us may be here but it doesn't matter as long as you're on the path 
okay? As long as you're on the path somewhere, you can always move forward or stop for a little bit, you know, or even travel backwards, you know. So just keep the faith when it comes to your purpose and know that your legacy and the perfect career for you and all these goals, all these long-term goals, they're on your path for a reason and they're coming up. It's just they're not meant to be here right now affecting you. Right now, what you're dealing with is, is meant to be here. So keep the faith, Aquarius, and never doubt your purpose. Never doubt your legacy because that's something that comes with you to this realm, okay? So if you have any questions, I have all my information below. Um, I will have my email and my social media. And you can always comment any um, feedback or you know input or questions that you have below. I would love that. I love all the comments. Um, for now, that's what I have for you, though, Aquarius, until we talk in a couple days for your March video, okay? So I will see you then.